much true. Creativity is a natural flow of energy and it will follow our moods, our health, and our stress levels. It's hard to find creative energy when we need to focus our energy on the more basic elements of life. If you're worried about something or working extra hard to achieve something or you're just not feeling very well, it's quite normal for the creative inspiration to decline. It's a natural sign that we need to focus on other things. But the best bit is when inspiration starts to kick in again because we know we're on the upswing and somehow things are going to be okay. Overwhelm comes from having so many options for inspiration, not just project ideas and products on your work table, but also having the entire world of the internet to fill our minds. There are thousands of ideas out there to find via Pinterest or blogs or magazines and so forth, but let's just look at one place and focus on the ways we can find inspiration there. And you can apply the same themes to things you find elsewhere too, of course. So let's start right here at Two Peas. How can you find inspiration? Well, the first stop can be the gallery. You can, in, you can view the entire gallery or just what you want to see. Paper scrapbooking, digital scrapbooking, card making, photography, and so on. You can view all projects posted by the entire Two Piece community, or you can narrow your search to just the garden girls, depending on your style. Browse through for a few pages and open a new window with any layouts that catch your eye. Add them to your bookmarks for a permanent record of the pages you like, or click the like button on a project to have just a short-term list. If you click over to your own profile, it now shows your recently liked projects. But your bookmarks stay put, and you can view projects from years ago if you like. That can be handy for finding a project when an older paper is no longer for sale. But let's stay on topic. So browsing the gallery and bookmarking your favorite pages is one step. What if you have some supplies in your collection and really just can't figure out how to use them well? But you paid for those supplies and you really want to get your money's worth and make something rather than just having them sitting there on a shelf. Well, instead of starting in the gallery, start in the store. Find the product or a similar product in the Two Peas inventory, and below the product description, look for the tabs that say Garden Projects and Member Gallery. Both of these tabs will show you projects made with that product, so you can see how other crafters have put the same product into action. From there, you can click to see any of those pages at a larger size, and you can add them to your bookmarks, of course. But instead of just general examples, you'll have something that gives you a direct spark for a particular product you have in your hands. Or, if you'd like someone else to set the rules, why not join in a challenge? There are several to choose from, and most two-piece challenges change every week. If you head to the scrapbooking or card-making tabs at the top of two-piece, you can go straight to the challenges for that topic. Most of the ongoing projects here at Two Peas include a challenge, including Memory Keeping Mondays, Finally Friday Cards, and even these very adventures of Glitter Girl. If you're you're working on a project life album, you might check out 2012 Captured because that project offers extra help and a challenge each month. Plus, there are standalone challenges that change every week, like the current challenge this week is to scrap lift a project from the Two Peas Gallery. Some of the challenges include a prize for an extra bit of incentive to give it a try, but the general idea is to take the challenge and allow it to set you limits with what you create today. For example, the current Memory Keeping Monday challenge includes a page sketch, so you can follow that sketch with your own supplies and your own photos to tell a story you want in your albums without overthinking where the page elements will go because someone else has kindly set that limitation for you. Okay, so it's all well and good to have all these ideas to find and have a lovely page of bookmarks, but what do we do with them now? Let's look at our options for how that, for that incredible concept known as scrap lifting. Scrapbooking is a unique craft, you know. We set immense pressure on ourselves to make each page a completely different work of art than the last. When you compare that to other crafts like sewing or cross-stitching or knitting, you'll find that pressure doesn't exist in the same way. In those crafts, most crafters buy a pattern and follow it, making the same project that someone else designed. A few of those crafters will go on to add their own unique unique twist to the pattern, and a very few are designers who write their own patterns, but the vast majority look for something they like and then follow instructions to make it themselves. Sometimes it's okay to follow the notion of all those crafters following patterns. Scrap lifting means looking at a layout and taking a little or a lot of inspiration from it as you make your own page. If you're creating a page just for your own albums, then by all means, use the inspiration out there to guide you and give you a pattern. You can follow it as much or as little as you like. There are plenty of scrapbookers out there sharing their ideas and hoping you will find them inspiring, so take those ideas and run with them. Now, the scrap lifting concept sometimes gets a bad reputation, and here's why. 
Scraplifting for your own albums is 100% cool. Take a little, take a lot from a page that's been shared. For your albums, that's fabulous. Of course, it's a little different if you then submitted that page to a magazine and said it was your own idea. That's not very nice to the original designer who put her work out there to inspire other people. Same goes if you publish it on a blog or a newsletter or a gallery without so much as a thank you to the person who inspired you. That's not very cool. And if you think back to those other crafts, the same thing goes. If somebody made an outfit following a pattern and then submitted it to a pattern company and said it was their own original idea, we wouldn't think that was very nice. So it's just not saying thank you to the designer who put her creative work out there in the world to share it with others. But you can scrap lift and still have great creative karma. If you learn a technique from somebody's work, say so when you publish your layout to a gallery or your blog. Just let You can even let that scrapbooker know. You can leave a comment or send her an email. And then just don't submit scrap lifted pages to magazines or design teams. It's that simple. Follow those guidelines and scrap lifting can be your creative tool to find inspiration and run with it. You can use a page from your bookmarks as just a little inspiration by looking at one element of the page. Try things like the theme or the topic, the style of the title, the number and placement of the photographs, the color combination, a rough sketch of the design, a particular embellishment, the collection of or types of supplies, and the style or topic of the writing. Broken down into separate elements, you can then take your bookmarks and make a list, which is essentially setting your own challenge. Or, of course, you can scrap lift an entire page from start to finish and just make it very similar using your own supplies and own photos. But to show this idea of taking little pieces from different layouts in action, I chose several things from layouts posted at Two Piece. From Caroline Akiji, I took the product choice of Peachy Keen and that product collection from American Crafts, especially the border strips, which I've had the whole pack in my stash too long, and it's time that they need to be on a layout. From Jen Chapin, I took the mix of buttons and die, die cuts as this beautiful garland accent. From For, um, For Shanna, I took the simplicity of a white cardstock background that lets the colors pop, even if they're somewhat muted. From Vilna, I took the mix of color and black and white photographs printed in a strip. From Brianna, I took the Time Flies title, which led me to choose photos that were several years apart. And from Mary Grace, the addition of lace as a finishing touch, which is something I love, even though this page is a much older layout in my bookmarks. So with all the different bits and pieces of inspiration I've gathered from my bookmarks, I started to make my layout. I started with that product inspiration that I took from Caroline's page. So I'm using the Peachy Keen collection, including pattern papers, border stickers, and these little tag accents, and some uh, dimensional stickers. That's all from Peachy Keen by American Crafts, and then some hot pink thickers as well. I'm going to make my page on plain wide cardstock and um, all of the pattern papers have a tiny accent of gray running through them or some of them are completely gray. So I'm using gray ink on my background paper to start adding some color that will pull that all together and that's the October afternoon sprinklers and that's from the art box set. While that's drying on my page, I'm going to cut my pattern paper into strips and boxes, and then I'm going to ink all the edges in black. And I just want to use something to bring all the different patterns together. They're all from the same collection, but they're all quite different. And even if I'm mixing collections, I find that if I add the same color of ink to the edges, it helps everything fit together and just feel a bit more cohesive. So I'm adding black to all the edges here. Then I'll start adding these layers to the page. Because I want to add quite a, a large garland piece to the bottom, I'm keeping all the pattern paper at the top half of the layout, and I'm just layering the patterns up in a way that, that tends to look nice. I'm not really overthinking, and I'm just sticking um, the adhesive on the back and laying them down on the layout in the place where they look best and pasting as I go. I find that this way works a little bit better than overthinking and trying to move things around a lot, but um, it does differ from scrapbooker to scrapbooker. I just find that I work better if I go ahead and add the adhesive and have to move things around as I go. It does mean that sometimes I'll pick up another page element like this blue pattern paper. I'm going to pick it up and pick um, put the pink underneath. 
Now, I w realize now that the ink looks too covered up, so I'm just going to add another layer that includes some of these patterns before I put the photos down on the page. And, and that will bring the ink together and it, make it be a little less um, hidden in the corner and, and make it look a bit more like it's supposed to be there rather than I was trying to cover it up and I just didn't cover it all. I wanted to use that border piece, so I'm picking the bunting flags and I'm going to cut just one off because I want it ever so slightly shorter than the whole page. So just trim one flag off the edge and then the rest just adheres. It's all backed with adhesive already. Basically these are just like thickers but they're borders instead of letters. With that in place there's two more layers I want to add here. I have this strip of photographs and these are photographs and I just kind of mixed some of them are black and white and some of them are color and they are five different pictures of the two of us um, over the years. And then the last strip of pattern paper is one that's cut to quite a narrow strip and I'm attaching that to the layout with foam squares so that it will um, pick up off the page a little bit. And these, the pattern paper just looks like little circles here, but what it is are the keys on an old typewriter and the top row of the keys on the typewriter would be all the numbers. So I thought the numbers went well with, um, with different photos over time. Then I'm going to add my title in that little gap above, um, above the pictures there toward the left. And I'm just spelling that out with thickers and I took my title from Brianna's layout which was called Time Flies. I love adding punctuation at the end of a title. I just sometimes find that if it's a simple title it works best there to, to say that it's done. So with that in place then I'm ready to add that big banner of embellishment and I just wanted to start picking out a few things picking out the largest items first. So I'm starting with this big die cut from my mind's eye that says just the two of us. And then I'm going to choose a few of the tags from the Peachy King collection that I showed at the very beginning. I think some of these I will layer up as I go, but I'm going to put two or three of them on the garland strip. And that blue one will be perfect for adding something on top and not covering up the design because it's quite a, a repetitive pattern. So that I'm not going to hide the flowers or the bicycle, but I can add something on top of the blue. I also use these stickers, but stickers in a garland would obviously not flow very well because they'd want to stick to the background. So I'm just attaching them to some pattern paper and then I'll cut around the edge. That way the stickers won't stick to the background sheet. Now I've taken all those bits and pieces and thread them along a length of Baker's twine. Just punched holes in anything that didn't already have that. I added some buttons in pink and white. And that's all the different colors so you can see what they come in. And um, I've also added some pink heart embellishments from Pebbles and I attached them to, uh, to some washi tape. Now. As you hold the garland, it will inevitably all fall the wrong way, but that can be fixed later. I'm going to attach this to the layout with some brads, and these are also from Peachy Keen, and they are um, floral 